All right, guys, and my 13% female audience, it's time to take a lesson in owning the lips. But I'm not gonna be the one teaching you this lesson. Instead, we're gonna learn everything we need to know from this edgy new adult cartoon that they don't want you to see. Whoever they is. Mr. Berksham is the newest in a long string of poor Family Guy imitators, with the only thing making it stand apart from the rest being the context it was released in. See, instead of finding this fine program on television or on one of the main streaming services like Netflix or Max, to watch Mr. Bertram, you have to head on over to the streaming service I just discovered existed, The Daily Wire Plus. I don't know much about The Daily Wire, but I can recite every line of the cutscenes in Sonic Adventure 2 if you ask me. But all I know is that they're a very conservative platform who've been looking to bring in a larger viewer base, mixing in some more general programs among their political documentaries and the sorts. It's basically the same thing as Butch Hartman's Field Oasis streaming service, just way too niche of a market for the vast costs that come with keeping up a service like this. Check out the Sleep Channel, Fairly Odd Parents one on there right now. Uh, subscribe. This included an entire kids block with this god awful Bluey ripoff called Chip Chilla. I watched a single clip on YouTube and it was just them making really on the nose allegories for being upset at a president yeah! for cheating and not being your personal choice. Biting. And so now it appears they're aiming for the opposite side of the spectrum now and targeting their shows towards adults. They used this platform as a major selling point in advertising. That it was so freaking anti-woke that nobody wanted it apart from the Daily Wire. Oh boy, I can't wait to watch this cartoon that nobody wanted. Sounds fantastic. You keep my wife's name out of your damn mouth. Current. And so I watched it through very legal means, I assure you. And honestly, it's amazing. It might just be the worst show I have ever seen. And I sat through Brickleberry. And I sat through Paradise PD. And I sat through Border Town. And I sat through Forget About It. And I sat through Farzar. And I sat through Hoops. And I. So let's take a look at Mr. Bertram, the most pathetic series I have ever seen. This show isn't bad because it's edgy or too anti-woke. In reality, it is the most team adult comedy I've looked at on this channel. Again, this show isn't bad because it's edgy. It's bad because it's bad. We're selling a dream of perfection, like fashion models who never gain weight, or Android phones that never crash. Or the Green New Deal. Boy, I sure am glad they decided to add that out-of-place, horribly-timed guitar strum. Otherwise, I might have had trouble recognizing that as even being a joke. First off, just like every adult cartoon out there, this show is solely being advertised through its voice cast. We have such stellar heavy hitters as Roseanne Barr, Don't Look Up What She Said, Tyler Fisher, Danny Trejo, and Patrick, Patrick Warburton. What the fuck are you doing here? Two words that should never go together. Like women and opinion. Hey, I'm done. I'm going back to bed. I don't think she's joking. Now, if you're wondering who created this thing, it would be one Adam Corallo. Corallo? I don't know. He's a man I've only ever heard the name of in passing or through this one interview he did with Steve-O. Oh, dude, I'm about to strangle you out of your own consciousness. I thought you loved me. I will kill you. Apparently, Mr. Bertram is a character he used to play on a radio show back in the mid-90s that he just couldn't shake for some reason. I guess he was that amazing. And so after teaming up with a couple creatives that put together this brand new series for The Daily Wire, Plus, it stars the titular Mr. Bertram, a headstrong woodshop teacher who is frequently inconvenienced by the issues plaguing our world today, such as veganism, feminism, and general PC wokeness. But this is an emergency. There is a cat dabbing on TikTok. This is cleverly shown through the series' main antagonist, this hipster guy who's been hired by the school to enforce the standards expected from the modern education system, like protecting kids from potential injuries, emotional scarring, and teaching them how to ask for consent. Yuck. See, you can tell he's a loser because he wears a The Force's female helmet. Wait, what year is it? He also has a wife, daughter, and son, but by god, do you care? They're the most bland set of characters out there. The wife is the wife. She tries to be hip with current trends, but feels because she is Liam. His gamer son is a disappointment who just sits in his room all day making content for the internet, oh. And his daughter is the only one here he really connects with, her respecting him a lot and also taking an interest in the exciting field of woodwork. There's only two episodes out at the minute, but the first almost entirely focuses on him wanting to harden his students to the dismay of his true 
triggered coworker. Donkey! I'm feeling very triggered by this whole donkey deal. Whereas the second shows him and his Navy friends going on a binge during Veterans Day as the woke guy tries to save the school principal from hanging out with them. Yeah, the principal and pretty much everyone at this school hates him right out the gate, which leads me to wonder why they even bothered hiring him in the first place if he's only ever a nuisance, but whatever, I don't think they thought that far ahead. The closest show I would probably compare this to would be King of the Hill. But it's the perfect example of why that series works so well in comparison despite having a similar setup. See, King of the Hill stars that conservative dad who also has very simple views of the world and struggles to adapt to modern times. But the difference between that and Mr. Bertram is, in Mr. Bertram, I can't for the life of me tell if I'm meant to like Mr. Bertram. The series is nothing more than a succession of basic observations. It feels like a bad stand-up routine more than anything. Character brings up some newfangled trend. To which Mr. Bertram replies with a snarky comment about how lame it is. You go, Mr. Bertram. I'm 45. Now, it's been a while since I've seen King of the Hill, and even then I've only ever watched the first season. But after sitting through the painful hour of Mr. Bertram, I decided to go back and watch the first couple episodes. And it was night and day. Not only visually, with Mr. Bertram looking especially abysmal even compared to a lot of the worst-looking adult shows I've covered in the past. The characters never break these static, dead-eyed stares, always looking into the abyss. And so much of the movement is either reliant on ugly-looking tweens basically just having the animation program do the work for you with no effort to clean it up afterwards. You know, this is prime. What kind of music do you like, Gloria? Level of animation. Hippo hop! Woohoo! Yeah, baby! Or otherwise, there are times where they just didn't animate at all. There's this episode they do that is entirely made up of keyframes, and I can't tell if that were an intentional decision or if they just ran out of time. The only times there is ever the tiniest spark of life in the animation is during the occasional cutaway gag. Which, by the way, happens extremely frequently. It is obnoxious. But I can only imagine it's because of these characters appearing for such short periods. It's quicker to just draw a couple of frames than to make an entire rig for them, but they're without a doubt the best looking part of the show. I'm a vegan. <laughs> And I'm sure that was all time and budget. I feel bad for the animators who had to work on this because they undoubtedly would have rather put their talents into something... Well, good. But beyond the looks, what makes King of the Hill work so well is that they never really present Hank as this unequivocally great guy. He's extremely flawed, mainly when it comes to his bad temper. And you can always tell that whenever he's incredibly opinionated about something, that it's coming from the character and not the writer. Whereas in Mr. Bertram, the cast feel like nothing more than sock puppets meant to be mouthpieces for whatever point they want to make. Similarly to F is for Family, a much better show. Check out my video. But you can tell these are examples where Bill Burr or Mike Judge simply took inspiration from people they've known throughout their lives, particularly their fathers. And so these characters, while loud and angry and not always the best people, are still approached with a level of understanding and respect. The joke comes from the fact that you've met a guy exactly like this. Nor what if he was the literal center of the world we're watching? And it's even more of an achievement to then go and make this character likable. Either through them not getting their way or learning to understand the other side and come around, or just being so headstrong in their beliefs that you can't help but laugh. All Hank or Frank wants are to raise what they believe to be the perfect nuclear family, to fulfill their extremely modest goals in this tiny, tiny world. Hank Hill is funny because he's a person. Mr. Bertram is agonizing because he's a mouthpiece. I don't know what Mr. Bertram's goal is on a wider scale. He never has enough time to interact with any of the characters to create something meaningful. They're too busy making some snide remark about kids these days, or about the social justice movement while they're telling a story with, you know, characters and stuff. In the first episode, he makes all the kids build his porch to teach them woodworking. The PC guy films this and reports him, and so he has to get on the stand and defend himself because he's at threat of losing his job. He also has to do this in front of the kids, I don't think they would let that happen. But also, there's not really any threat here because literally everybody loves the guy. The kids have all turned around on him off screen. There's no adversary other than the pathetic SJW guy. They're so desperate to showcase a world in which this guy only gets in the way of things that there's never any threat for the characters. None of it feels real. I don't even care about politics, I think I've made that pretty clear on this channel, but by God, all I ask is have a point, have a reason to exist, because all it seems you're doing here is preaching to the choir. Although maybe not, because apparently there was a bunch of infighting going on behind the scenes leading to voice actors quitting the cartoon over their own political differences. How fucking ironic is that? And by the way, whoever actually wanted to watch this show to see something edgy is going to be extremely disappointed. This is the tamest fucking show I've ever seen. I like the South Parks and the Family Guys. I'm fine with a bit of edge, but there just is none here. 
There's little to no swearing, there's no blood or guts, they don't even really say anything all that offensive. The writers are so smug about their beliefs that they don't even bother trying to write jokes about it. They simply present you with an exaggerated archetype, have Mr. Bertram make a smart remark about them for five seconds, and then they move on, that's the whole show! It's so cookie cutter and by the numbers it's a zombie! Oh, the little girl likes woodworking so she doesn't want her realtor mum to repaint the wooden fireplace in the house she's selling. She takes her daughter to work for some reason, who starts scraping it off as soon as the people coming to check out the place arrive. They immediately see her, and so just… leave. No jokes, no character moments, just nothing. Then the daughter proceeds to apologize for ruining it, when that was her whole fucking plan! I'm really sorry, Mom. No, I love that you fight for what you believe in. I just couldn't believe what I was watching. Hey, at least in Farzar, they had to think about a setup and stuff. They had to think about how they wanted to shamelessly reuse the Brickleberry character designs. But Mr. Bertram is just one of the lamest, most unsuccessful at what it sets out to do cartoons that I've ever watched. It's just sad. Despite the advertising, there is not a single soul on Earth who could even possibly think of being entertained by this. Never mind offended. I can offend someone better than this. Watch me!